Another showcase here of Gundam program. This OVA is 1996 to 1999's The Eighth MS Team. And um, I'm discussing this via proxy of a compilation film which was released in 98. It compiles um, some of the, like the first six episodes of the program and discusses them in the, in the context of flashbacks as a, as a court-martial. This may or may not have had something to do with from what I read, the initial director of this program passed away after a car accident uh, during production of the seventh episode, I think. And so this was their way of possibly possibly making up for some time while they could um, find their replacement. It's very sad circumstances. It's really strong OVA, in my opinion. It's, it's kind of a... They do essentially a sort of... It reminds one of Vietnam War films, essentially. It's, it's set in steering in Indochina somewhere, I bought formerly Indo... I don't think they call it Indochina anymore, in the Universal Century. And they... It's a lot of ground warfare, urban combat. No, very, very little of it if is set in space. It's a very interesting take on the Universal Century mythos and extraordinarily well animated. Episode 10, or... Yeah, I think it's episode 10 or 11, contains what I later realised um, after the fact, um, and it, but I was extraordinarily impressed with it when watching it, is actually considered the best fight in the history of Gundam. It, and, it was extra, and it was extremely impressive. As of my Stardust memory retrospective, we're just going to read out the older IMDb reviews, and for the reasons I mentioned in that video, I find these perspectives on Gundam really fascinating like perspectives from the 23rd of September 2000 from Sa Sargon Ares. I'm not pronouncing that perfectly, I'm sure. They give it 10 out of 10, the second greatest Gundam series. This Gundam series only follows Gundam 0083 Stardust memory. The story takes place during the same timeline as the original Gundam in the year UC 0079, the time of the One Year War, but the mobile suits are designed as new models and are, as a result, look more articulate. The hero of the story is a young Lieutenant Shiro Amato who may lack any real combat experience but makes up for it with creativity and effort. His life gets complicated when he meets Aina Sahalan, a Geon ace pilot. The enemy, the, the two end up falling in love and begin to change their attitudes about the war around them. The other cast of characters in the story are not there for background either. Everyone in this story has a history to them. There is also another ace mobile suit pilot in this series that can be added into the pantheon of ace mobile suit pilots. Right up there with Jairus Naval and Anna Vulgato is Norris Packard, not the top villain in this series, but his presence give the 8th mobile suit team a hard fight. Three of them against Norris in his single MS-07B goof custom model suit. In, this in, in conclusion, this Gundam, along with Stardust memory, is a must-see. Fair from the 27th of December 2000, Gundam Platoon Style. Unlike most other Gundam series, which take up their majority of their time in space, 8th MS team is 95% ground-based. This thrilling, well-animated OAV series focuses on the 8th MS team, a group of pilots who have limited mass production Gundams for ground use. Their goal is to search out a Xeon research base holding a powerful mobile armor. However, problems start to emerge when the team leader falls in love with the pilot of the armor. The OAV has some of the best animation in Gundam. There's a lot of movement and detail. The mecha designs by Kunio Okawara and Hajime Katoki are great. Okawara gives Gundams and the NGMs a tank-like feel, and Katoki redesigns classic Xeon mobile suits for the 90s. The story is well done with convincing characters and a fully realized love story, much better than the half-hearted romances in 0083 and Wing. Overall, great series. I suggest you check it out when it comes to video slash DVD next year. This was another interesting one we've got. This is interesting. Gundam Wing meets Team Yankee meets Hamburger Hill from STP-43 on the 26th of June 2003. They've written... Oh, sorry, I just lost my... Yep. Anime has a large variety of character characteristics, and among the more underappreciated qualities are that stories tend to emphasize character interplay with an often striking level of sophistication. Such is the case of this 1996 anime series focusing on war between Earth's Federation and a rebel empire known as the Xeon. The focus is on two characters, Shiro Amada, a lieutenant of the Federation who, after an attack on a Federation troop ship in space, winds up flying a mobile armor suit into battle against his attacker. The battle somehow goes wrong and both Amada and his enemy are floating in the remains of a destroyed battle star. Amada's enemy is a Xeon officer named Aina, 
and when the two cross swords in the weightlessness of the abandoned warship, they get to know each other and begin to form a friendship. Both must go their separate ways and are eventually rescued. Later is the Earth Federation, called Fetis by the Sion, and Zeon struggle on the planet itself, Amado and Ainami yet again in battle, and again fate forces both to cooperate, this time in the deadly frost of a mountaintop. Once again their friendship begins to blossom, and once again fate takes them their separate ways into eventual rescue. Both young officers face grave controversies as a result of their encounters. Fushiro Amada, Fetty Honcho, suspect him of being a Zeon spy, while Aina finds herself clashing more and more with her brother, Zeon Commander Guineas, who is obsessed with completing a superweapon called the Absolus, even to the point of double-crossing his own officers to get it finished, with his favourite method of double-cross being high explosives. There is plenty of action involved, and amid the combat there is a striking moral dilemma involved. Though the Earth Federation are, nationally, are notionally the good guys, and the Xeon betray a sinister hue that makes them the notional bad guys, ambiguity pervades the entire conflict, just who is in the right here. It is a question that plagues both Amata and Aina to the point they both turn against their nations, leading to a final confrontation on a vast mountaintop when the Absolus appears and opens fire on the Fetty forces. It all leads to the very best scene of the entire series, a scene played out against an impressive glow of white light.